and we are into what I like to call the money chapters. Um, quite frankly, they're 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 money makers. Um, we're going to talk about costs. We're going to talk about profits. We're going to talk about how many units you should produce, how many employees you should hire, that type of thing. So these are um, kind of what you've built towards through macro and micro, and it's five chapters in a row. Okay, so we're going to talk about cost up front, um, which is this chapter, uh, the cost of production, and then we're going to move into the different types of markets. Uh, you have monopolies, you have monopolistic competition, you have oligopolies, and you have uh, competitive markets. So uh, how you determine how many employees you hire, how many units you produce varies depending upon that, um, what type of market you're in. So um, let's start talking about cost. Well, before, why, why, why do we care about cost? Well, because profit equals total revenue minus total cost. So what you're looking at, we abbreviate profit as pi, total revenue is TR minus total cost TC. Now, which one of these do you think companies should be obsessed with? Businesses, people. Revenue. Hmm? Revenue. Yeah, people think revenue. Usually the first thing I get is, oh, profit. But notice I say, I didn't say what are companies obsessed with. I said, what should, should they be obsessed with? What's the only thing they can control? It's the only thing they can control. Can you control, if you open up a business, how many people show up on Monday? Nope. You can market and hope they show up. Can you control where equilibrium falls in the price that you charge? Eh, a little bit. Oh, I'll just undercut everybody. Are you making money doing that? Mm -mm. The market determines how much a chicken sandwich is worth. The market determines how much a Camry is worth. Plus your monopoly. We can talk about that next week, but actually two. Um, you can't control price. You can't control who shows up. So when you're looking at total revenue, you know total revenue is simply price times quantity. The price you get times the quantity you sell. That's your revenue, right? If you sell 10 units at $5 a piece, that's $50 in revenue. Is that $50 in profit though? No, it's just $50 in revenue. You got to take out the total cost, then that's your profit. All right. Keep in mind. Look, price is on this axis, quantity is on that axis. There's your price. There's your quantity. This box. It's total revenue. Price times quantity. Okay, so we got this. Y'all been doing that for a while. All right. Total cost is what? Fixed cost plus variable cost. You know, I know the difference between fixed cost and variable cost. Uh, take cost away the set cost yeah. Every month your rent is, let's say, $500. Okay, that's fixed. You sign a contract. Now, eventually, say in a year, the contract's up, it's a lease. Okay, and every cost is variable. So keep in mind, in the long run, LRs long run, all costs are variable. But in the short run, you've got fixed costs, you've got variable costs. Where are your variable costs? Let's say we own a restaurant, okay? And we own the building, or we're making mortgage payments on it, that's a fixed cost, right? Okay. Um, me buying buns for hamburgers, that's a variable cost. I choose how many I want to buy every month. If I shut down in the pandemic, am I buying hamburger buns? No, so it went to zero. If I'm very busy, am I buying a lot of hamburger buns? Yeah, that's a variable cost. Yeah, it varies with your business. Either way, I'm paying the mortgage on the building, yes? Fixed cost, okay? Now, if 
Now, you, you make choices here, right? You make choices here, though. You just lock in. You didn't have to sign that lease for that restaurant. Or you signed it for six months versus 36 months. That's a thing. There's some choice here, too. You, the only place here you have some control is here. A lot of people say, ah, I can control this. Can you? 99.9999% of markets, you can't control price. You're told the price. Even Walmart, even Amazon, will you overpay for something as a customer? Not willingly. Okay. Price is determined by the market right here. Quantity is determined by the market. This is market. All right. This is you. All right. So, what should you be obsessed with as a business person? Calls. Yes, sir. Yeah, they have some market power, but even then, even then, a monopoly, even, even if, all right, so let's, uh, Duke Energy is a government endorsed monopoly. You have no say in how much they charge you for price, for electricity, or do you? It's a government regulated monopoly. To raise their rates, they have to mail you a letter, they have to send you an email, and they have to get approval of the South Carolina State Legislature. Suddenly, you have a little bit of control in that monopoly. Now, let's say it's just a wild monopoly. Um, campus bookstore, that's a good one. Okay, do you have any say in those prices? No. Thankfully for you, you were, you're an SMC and you have faculty who, who have done that for you. You guys pay a flat fee now, it used to be ridiculous. Uh, we went, went, went to bat for this as well. It used to be like five, six hundred dollars just to buy your books. And that came out of your pocket. All right, and then you paid a flat fee. All right, that was ridiculous. We saw a monopoly, we destroyed it. You don't make a lot of money. You know what the secret is to make a lot of money? Create or destroy a monopoly because then you have what's called market power. The only way, see, this is market, right? The only way you affect this is with market power. So again, that's the exception. Okay? This is the rule. You control costs. These are elective, man. You choose that. Okay? You choose that. In the long run, though, all costs are variable. In the short run, this week, can we sell this campus? In the short run, this is a college campus, is it not? Two years from now, it could be anything. You understand? In the short run, a bowling alley is a bowling alley. In the long run, it could be anything. See how things vary in the long run? Yeah. All right. Now, we have a lot of different types of costs to cover, and not enough time to do it. But let's talk about the difference between economists and accountants. So we're talking about profits here. Let's talk about economists versus accountants. Accounting costs, or excuse me, accounting profit. By the way, let me finish that point. What's the biggest difference between accountant and economist? How they run a business, how they see the world. All right, let's say I'm CEO of Michelin North America. I walk in today. I've got a let's say three inputs: labor, man hours, right? Rubber and steel. I have choices to make. Economics is to study how people make choices under conditions of scarcity. I'm gonna have so many land, so many labor hours, so much rubber, so much steel. What do I choose to produce? Well, you're like tires. You no, know, that's great. What kind of tires? Truck tires, 18-wheeler tires, airplane tires, motorcycle tires, tractor tires, earth mover tires. They do all those. Do you understand that? You don't know how tires are made? We should take a tour over there. It's pretty cool. I used to work for them. It's pretty cool. I, work, I, I grew up in Lexington County, South Carolina, but I, I actually got to take a tour of that plant down there And when I worked at Michelin North America up here at the headquarters. It was pretty cool. When they make the big earth moving tires, you see them hanging out of 18-wheelers, and they put like two of them in container. 
those are going to mines a lot of times in Asia and Europe, but um, I can make those tires. I can make 18 wheeler tires. I can make tires for a Camry. I can make tires for a Ford F-150, okay? Those are all different kinds of tires, but they have three inputs, steel, rubber, and man hours. So if I'm the CEO of Michelin, and I choose to make 1,000 units of tractor trailer tires, does that have a cost? Yeah, man hours, you know, labor, rubber, and steel. Those are explicit costs. They show up on a balance sheet. I bought this much rubber, paid this much wages, and bought this much steel. And the energy that takes to heat it all up and put it all together, right? Hopefully not the labor. I'm trying to keep them safe. Okay. Well, what are my other types of costs? If I make a thousand truck tires, maybe I didn't make 500 agriculture tires because they're bigger. Right? There's something called implicit costs. So explicit costs are on the balance sheet. You understand? There was a price associated with the labor I paid. There was a price associated with the steel I paid for. There was a price associated with the rubber I paid for. But what about if I'm walking in, what about my opportunity cost if I'm a CEO making that decision? An economist thinks about opportunity costs. That's an implicit cost. That's something that's not on a balance sheet. What's the cost of a thousand 18 wheeler tires? How much could I have made agriculture tires? How many could I have made dirt bike tires? How many could I have made aviation tires? Believe it or not, if airplanes go through tires, man. It's the only thing that touches the ground when you land. Think about that. If they, you know, pop, is that a good thing? Negative. All right. So what's the opportunity cost? Explicit costs, input costs that require an outlay of money by the firm, i.e. they show up on a balance sheet. Okay. Implicit costs, in, uh, input costs that do not require an outlay of money by the firm. So if I choose to make a thousand 18 wheeler tires, the cost implicitly, my opportunity cost is 500 agriculture tires I didn't make. Does that have a cost? Yes, it does. And that's what separates you from being a CEO type thinker. You got to think about not only how much, how many, you know, making peanut butter and jelly. I need peanut butter, I need jelly, I need bread. Okay. What's the cost of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Time spent making a pimento cheese sandwich. Time spent taking the jelly and making toast. Okay. There's always a cost to your actions, whether it's an outlay of cash or not, opportunity costs. You guys are with me for 50 minutes a day. We got about 150 minutes worth of materials to cover. So yeah, I don't know why some of y'all skipping the reading. Y'all need it bad, okay? Got an email yesterday from someone on macro. What's, uh, <laughs> I remember the macro kids, right? Remember that? You thought you could skip the reading. Well, how can I get my grade better? You would access the reading five times. We're in week 11. What y'all think our average is? A, pretty. B, not so pretty. B, not so pretty. There is cost to your choices. If you choose to do the reading, it costs you time, does it not? If you choose not to do the reading, it costs you average points. Not that complicated. If you choose to make 18 wheeler tires, it costs you rubber steel man hours that you could have used to make agriculture tires or tires for a Camry. Or an Earth Moon. Or the Space Shuttle. They show us that tire. There's that. Except for Elon's. He just lands his back on a platform out in the ocean. It's pretty cool. Everything has a cost. So you have explicit cost versus implicit cost. Implicit costs appear on your budget, your accounting forms. Implicit costs are opportunity costs. Okay. This is an outlay, outlay of money. 
this is a foregoing of opportunity. Let's take a big picture. You guys are in college right now, obviously, right? You're enrolled at Spartanburg Methodist College. Could you be spending this time doing something else, like earning money? You guys looked at the two opportunities and chose to come to college versus earning money right now. There is a monetary cost chosen uh, associated with your, with your choice. You guys are actually betting on yourselves. You're saying, if I forego income right now for two, three, four years, okay, I can up my value and earn more later to make up for it. How's that not gamble? It's the same thing. You're looking at opportunity costs. You guys know implicit costs. All right. You're taught this very well on accounting. All right. So this this leads us to accounting profit. Remember pi is profit, right? Versus economic profit. All right. Accounting profit is laid out very well in your book. <clears throat> as total revenue minus explicit cost. Stuff that appears in your budget. Okay. And you guys have been trained and thought, and trained and taught and everything. Accounting profit. If you want to start having more visionary leadership, you need to start thinking about economic profit. Okay, economic profit is the same. All right, so it's total revenue minus explicit cost. But it's also minus implicit cost. If you're a CEO, you better start thinking in terms of economic profit. If you're going to be the CEO of your life, you better start thinking about your opportunity costs and the choices you make. Because you can leave this class and blow up your next class, but then you're not getting smarter. You can leave this class, go home and read and get smarter. Okay. If you're going to gamble on yourself, you better you better go all in. Okay, and get smarter. Because if you don't get smarter and you think the degree is just going to get you a job, a degree will get you a job. Knowledge will help you keep it. A degree will get you a job if you can eat through, but you better have some skill when you get there. I've learned that the hard way myself. I let a degree get me a job, and I realized I didn't have the skill to keep it. So what I do, go back to grad school and pick up those skills. All right. What kind of skills did I need? Project management skills, professional development. Which I've been taught like something that like okay you got a project this is how you're gonna work it that thing man if only I could have created a degree program that allows you to get your bachelor's degree where you get professional development a business education that allows you to be hit the ground running not only have the degree but also have the skills to back it up I can help you get a job my degree will help you keep it in Excel I'm sorry hmm. if only I could do that. BA at SMC. Starting in the fall, you can do it 100% online as well. That's my ad. A little advertisement for myself. It's going on YouTube later. I'm, you know, I've got a kid in Israel right now taking classes, and that's pretty cool. Take over the world. Where? Hmm? You said where? Israel. Implicit costs, explicit costs. Accounting profit, economic profit. You'll see the difference. Economic profit basically boils down. Economic profit includes opportunity costs. So all this, all this comes into includes opportunity costs. All right, y'all got that? Take a breath. Boy, we got some crap to cover, man. I'm telling you, we ain't started yet. Forgot my watch. 
came after, right? Like that. Twenty-seven minutes. Time for light calisthenics. All right, that's it. What happens to productivity over time? This is just a throw in. Okay. If you look at Units produced over time, right? This timeline units produced. This is not many. This is a lot. Okay. And this is just money in terms of cost or revenue. Okay. When you start putting units in there, you're going to produce. Then you're going to level off. Then you start to decline. Okay. What if I told you every bit of this is defined by cost? All right. If you can go into an organization, in an Excel sheet, they have we produced this many tires, we produced this many tires, we produced this many tires. Oh, well, we hired this many people, we hired this many people. And you can look at what they produced and then examine their costs and tell them if they're they're doing as well as they could, if they could do better, or perhaps maybe we need to lay off a few people and make ourselves more profitable. Do you think you bring value then? Do you think your superior notices and you move right up? Yeah. Pay attention over the next what four, five weeks. You'll pick up some skills that will differentiate yourself from your competition. All right, we're going to go here eventually. All right, you'll be able to just look at a spreadsheet, put together something in Excel, and go places. All right, we're cool. See, there's people now just laying up. They're not watching the lecture. They're just taking the homework. Sometimes taking the exam. It's not going well for them. I'm going to well for them at all. Although, overall, I'm pretty pleased with this group. Macro? Oof. Doing it to themselves, though. That class started out with 31 people and down to 17. You know that little part in that weekly overview where I say, if you don't do four assignments, I drop you? Yeah. 14 people have taken me up on that deal. Y'all going to do it? No, sir. Appreciate it. Y'all got this? We need to move on. All right, different types of calls. Diminishing marginal product, y'all get that? Oh, we talk about fixed costs and variable costs, right? We already put that up there. Fixed costs are costs that do not vary with the quantity of output produced. Okay, you can rent a restaurant. You don't care how many muffins you make that day, your rent is this. Okay, variable costs, costs that vary with the quantity of output produced. You have different costs if you make 50 muffins versus 500 muffins. Those are variable costs. Um, variable costs, variable costs. Is this a variable cost? Yep. I just lowered the electric bill. You know that? Okay. You're like, oh, you know what? I live in the dorm. I can leave the water running and the power on and everything. Are those explicit costs? Our power bill is something like $75,000 a month or something like that. Crazy. It's because y'all got like a fan going, your Xbox still on, all the stuff, okay? All the lights on. You realize that raises your tuition, right? Because if our costs go up, what do we have to raise? Our price. What's our price tuition? So maybe next time you leave the dorm, turn off a few lights. Will you? Save the environment. You know, I'm masking in that. No, I'm just trying to keep your tuition lower so I can have more of it. Okay, fixed and variable costs. Woo! Average total cost. Good grief. All right, we got all kind of costs to cover here. So you know we, we've got we got fixed we got total cost, fixed cost, and now we're gonna start getting some averages cost. So we got you know profit equals total revenue minus total cost. Okay, total revenue equals fixed cost or sorry equals price times quantity. Okay, this is what I was trying to go. Total cost equals fixed cost plus variable cost. All right. Now we have something called average 
total cost. Okay, you'll see it is ATC. ATC is your total cost divided by your quantity produced. Sometimes you might see it as Y. Okay, Y is output. All right. Um, another big one, marginal cost. You guys learned in the language that is macroeconomics and economics in general. Marginal just means next, right? How does much, how much does my next hamburger produced at our restaurant cost me? Marginal cost. Okay. All right. It is the change. I'm sorry. Let me go MC. Is the change in total cost given some change in quantity? So if I go from 13 hamburgers to 14 hamburgers, Q changed, right? Guess what? Cost changes too. Cost changes too. All right. Um, let's see here. Let's add in. Come fall, better be rid of this thing, right? Some real, real, real good stuff to do. We'll be back at 150 minutes a semester. It's going to be great. Can't wait. All right, we've got fixed costs, we've got variable costs. What else we need here? Average variable costs. Okay. Well, you know what? We've got average total costs, right? Yeah, let's go average fixed costs. All right. That's AFC. What do you think that is? Your fixed cost divided by quantity, right? Let's go average variable cost, AVC. Okay, guess what that is? Variable cost divided by Q. What do you think average total cost can equal? Well, you got total cost divided by Q, but total cost is FC plus VC. So what do you think ATC equals? AFC plus AVC. All right, seems a little foreign to you right now, but it's actually quite simple. We're going to do a tape. All right. In your hymnals, I am pulling from table two. We're talking about a Caleb's Coffee Shop from your read. Actually, had somebody else ask, where do you get all these examples in your video? Y'all do know I hide the answers to the exam in plain sight. We think you're going to see a table like this on your next exam, maybe a few blanks in there, and all you got to do is figure out what they are. It ain't that complicated. I ain't trying to trust me. I go through and make them exams. I got, I got three buttons I can click when I make those exams. Three categories. Difficult, moderately difficult, and easy. Where do you think I pull all my questions from? Negative. They're all from the easy category. Every one of them. And then I go through and find the easiest of the easy, and I put those on the exam. So if you're finding the exams more difficult, I say the, the, the problem's on your end. The answers are in the book. It's crazy. It's crazy. When I met my wife at Clemson, okay, my, my GPA was 25 ish, 26 ish, okay. Met my wife just in time. Okay. She wanted to go to med school. If I wanted to hang out with her, believe you me, I wanted to hang out with her. Okay. I had to be studying. And at first, I was pretending like, you know, like when you have study hall for, for sports teams and everything. I was pretending. I was just looking at the book while I was secretly looking at my phone. You know what I'm saying? And this is back in the day where I get hit like, you know, seven, four times to get the letter B. You understand? Okay. It's an iPhone. All right. I got bored, so I started reading. You know what I found out? They keep the answers to the exam in the damn book. So if you read, you'll find them too. My GPA got up just enough, 3.0. All right, cum laude. I thought I was graduating, thank you, lot. Okay. Next thing you know, I can get in grad school. All right. Let's look at output. All right. Let's look at total cost, which is just fixed cost plus variable cost. This is table two. All right. 
Let's look at. Dang it, it's all in my way. At, mm -hmm. Average variable cost. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's look at. I'm, I'm, I'm getting off kilter here because this little handle on this thing. Average fixed cost, AFC. Okay. Average variable cost. And then average total cost. What do we know there? Average fixed cost plus average variable cost equals average total cost. You got me? See all these little formulas matter now. Okay. And then marginal cost, which is some change in total cost given some change in total quantity. What, where do you think, what do you think is the most important column up there? How can you look and say, mm, I shouldn't have made that muffin. Ooh, I shouldn't have produced that tire. Ooh, I shouldn't have hired that person. What's the only thing that looks at what's next? Marginal cost. This bad boy here matters. This one. We got to go through all that to get there, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to give you a flash forward, if you will. The key to the next five weeks, if you go completely just dumb on a test or something, I'm about to tell you something. That's the key to the next five weeks. I'm not saying it's going to get you a good grade, but it'll get you a passing grade. The key to the next five weeks what's MC? What's MR? Yes, ma'am. This is always the same. This depends on whether you're in a monopoly, monopolistic competition, an oligopoly, or a competitive market. So if we're spending this week on this, what are we spending the next four weeks on? Aha! Aha! This is the spoon. Watch and learn. Okay? Where's my book? I'm dizzy. Turn it around. I got video evidence. It would be funny if I just fell over. You got no video. Whatever happens, you just make sure I'm breathing. In the class is next, right? Cool. You maybe prop me up. With this mask, all bets are off, man. <laughs> Oxygen isn't quite getting to the brain like it normally should. All right. Okay. Let's say we have 11, 11 rooms here. Wait, one on one more. No. Let's say zero output. Let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I think in this example in your book, that's cup to coffee. Okay, you got me? Total cost, we need no fixed cost and variable cost. Fixed cost can be the same either way, right? Well, because yeah, they're fixed. So let's let's jump there first. So if that's all you had in that table, and you know whether or not I produce a unit or not. Okay. My fixed cost is three dollars. What's my fixed cost going to be down here? At Ten units. Three dollars. So y'all got paper with lines on it, probably. It's tough for me to write. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. What's my variable cost if I'm not producing anything? Variable cost only happens if you have output, right? So it's going to be zero all the way, right? True or false? Variable cost is always zero. False. That's from the easy category. Yeah? Let's say. And this is given in the example, okay? I'm not just making these numbers up. I'm just putting the numbers on the board so you can figure it out. 
let's say here it's 30 cent, then 80 cent, then three, but 50. What's happening to my variable cost over time? 240, as you produce more, it goes up, yeah? All right, uh, I'm at five, it's 350. I'm at six, it's 480. I'm at seven, it's uh, 630. It's harder than it looks. I'm at eight, it's uh, eight bucks. It's really escalating over time, right? Uh, and I'm at nine and it's uh, 990. I'm at 10 and it's $12. Okay. Now, I'm going to erase this part. Y'all remember that part, right? Okay. I'm going to erase this part so I can start to graph these costs over time. Because remember, like supply and demand is just a graphical representation of a table, is it not? This is kind of like our cost schedule over here. Let's look at value in terms of cost over time. That's in dollar form, right? Okay, and these are units, so quantity, all right, and quantity of output in this example. What is uh, marginal cost kind of over time? All right, what does this number? Does it not? Is that a close visual representation? See, if you look at figure four, they actually put everything in there, the dots and connect the dots, my favorite game from kindergarten, right? And they start to draw. Now, we are going to look at marginal costs, average fixed costs, average variable costs, average total costs, yeah, and marginal costs. Okay. So that do you believe is a graphical river? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do marginal costs. What did I mean to do? I meant to do variable costs. My, my apologies. Variable costs over time. Well, it really does that too, yeah. It just goes up. As you produce more, it's bigger. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I kind of gave away the punch line. Margin cost does the same thing. We'll, we'll get there. Okay. All right. Let, let me reset this because I want to do average fixed cost, average variable cost, average total cost, and marginal cost. But margin cost is going just like that. It's kind of like when you have one of those flash forwards and it's like two days ago. How do we get there? I love what comedy do that. All right. Oof. I told you I'll be math in this class. What's three plus zero? Let me, let me look it up. Make sure I get this right. Hmm. Three plus zero is three. Hard, y'all. Oh, I'm sorry. I screwed up. Told you. So on and so forth, right? Now, here comes the hard part. Not good. Really. We don't have negative one and zero, so we don't have a change from zero to or something before zero to nothing. That's just where we start. So there can be no average variable cost because, well, or average fixed cost or average total cost because, well, anything divided by zero, that's the quantity, is zero. So we don't even worry about that first row. You got me? Okay. Average fixed cost, okay, is fixed cost, okay, this is fixed cost. All right, so average fixed cost equals the chain, or excuse me, fixed cost divided by quantity. Fixed cost divided by quantity. Three divided by one, what you got? All right. Uh, fixed cost divided by two. You got me? See what we're doing here? I'm taking the fixed cost and dividing it by the corner. Three divided by three? One dog. I'm gonna just fill it in. I don't wanna insult your intelligence from there on out. Plus we're running short on time. 75, 60, 50, right? What we got here? Three divided by six. 
3 divided by 7. Let me help with the math on here. Which number is that? 3 divided by 7. Where are we at? 3 divided by 7. So it's output of 7. That's uh, 43 cents. All right. 3 divided by 8. That's going to be under 50, right? 3 divided by 8. That's going to be 38 cents. What's happening to my fixed cost over time? And that's going down. 3 divided by 9 is 33 cents, right? Okay. What's, uh, let's see here, 3 divided by 10 is 30 cents. See how we did that? Okay. So what you're saying is my average total cost, or excuse me, my average fixed cost starts like this and starts to plumbing. Is that a good graphical rep representation of what's going on there? Yeah. Okay. Now, Average variable cost equals my variable cost divided by quantity. Doing the same doggone thing. Variable cost, all right, divided by quantity. What do I got there? Okay. Well, 0.3 divided by one is 0.3. Yeah. All right, variable cost, 0.4, right? So on and so forth. It's actually going to go up by all the way down. Y'all follow? So I got that. Not, not too complicated. Now, here's easy. Average total cost equals average fixed cost plus average variable cost. Let's just add them up. Right. I'm just adding them up. You got me? in there so let me get one column back average variable cost did whatever time went up continuously linearly in fact 0.1 every time is that a linear increase okay average average total cost is then this line plus that line starts out high starts out high right it's got to be higher in both of these lines if it's this plus that, right? Starts out high, starts coming down, then goes back up. Reasonable graphical representation of what's on the table so far. Yep. Now let's look at the key one. Let's look at the key one. Give me a moment to catch up with the right. Chalk all over me. Hold on. we got four minutes. We can do this. Right on time. What was marginal cost? Remember delta, that triangle is a change. So a change in total cost divided by a change in quantity. Temptation is to start looking right here. Here's where we need to be looking. Now, we're jumping from here to here, right? And we're jumping from here to here. So when we're looking at this, this number is going to fall in between that jump. 
Yeah, I mean, so it's not on the same row, it's in between two rows, because if you go from zero to one, there's a marginal cost associated from going from zero to one. If you go from one to two, there's a marginal cost associated going from one to two. If you go from 338 to 339, there's an association between 338 and 339. All right? So, let's look at it that way. Tell me, my total cost at zero units is $3. That's just my fixed cost. My total cost at one unit, so going from zero to one units is now 330. What's the difference? 30 cents. 50 cents less popular cousin. Maybe, maybe the internet will get that one. Going from here to here, additional cost of 30 cents. See that? What you got there? 80 cents. All right, let's continue the exercise. Just to make sure, all we're doing here is $3 to the 330 is 30 cents. 330 to 380 is 50 cents. 380 to 450 is 70 cents. 450 to 540 is 90 cents. 540 to 650 buck 10. Okay, seven or excuse, 650 to 780-130, 780-930, $1.50, $9.30 uh, 11 to, to 12.90, you got a buck 90, 12.90 to, to or excuse me, nine units to 10 units, right? That's 12.90 to 15, 210. See how I did that? Is any of that complicated? Simple math, right? What if I told you knowing how to do that is easily the difference between earning 45K per year? And 145k per year is knowing that. At least halfway there. Because now I need to go back and teach you the four different markets, and then you can do revenue, and then you'll know I'm gonna operate on marginal cost, which you guys know what it is now, right? Okay, what does marginal cost do over time though? It increases, right? Something like this. Now you know that one. Good job. Reinforce it because in four weeks, five weeks, there's four different versions of that. You can tell me this. Zach, you're gonna earn more money. That's why I call these the money chapters. Read them, watch the videos, do them all. Okay? I don't care if you're gonna go work for a company, especially if you're gonna work for yourself. Because I can go work for a company and allow someone else to do this calculation for me. But if I'm working for myself, I don't care what you're doing. Uber, restaurant, the next Apple. You better know this because the next employee you hire generates a marginal revenue. But what you need to know is if it exceeds the marginal cost. Because if you're hiring people that are costing you money, are you profitable? Negative. Thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoyed it. I do all this again in my PowerPoint lecture videos as well as my ones with the whiteboard at home.